What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit more informative, a little bit more interesting. So if you're interested in solar power by any means, um, this is a video that might interest you. So I myself am still learning. Um, we had to do a little bit of research and take some notes, hence the iPad here, um, in order to make sure that I covered everything that we wanted to talk about. Is a nice joint effort between me and Hunter to accumulate the information so I'm gonna dive in cover the basics and um, if there's anything that we don't cover that you guys want us to touch on in a part two just because there is so much involved in solar panels um, solar power and you know everything that is incorporated into that we can do another video so um, basically I'm just going to talk about what we have how it works for us um, Let's see here. So I want to start out by talking about the system size. So it's a 6.7 kilowatt hour setup that we have, which is made up of 22 305 kilowatt hour panels themselves. So um, at the beginning, you saw kind of what our array looks like. I'll insert another photo right here, just kind of reminding you what that looks like as far as the um, 22 panels kind of looks like on our roof. We also, as you can see here with me, have two 13.5 kilowatt hour Powerwall 2s uh, from Tesla. Tesla is also who we went through for our solar system um, and solar panels as a whole as well. Between the two, there's 27 kilowatt hours combined. So for the solar panels as they are, those were installed in August of 2018. However, we did not have the power walls installed until April of 2019. So there was quite a bit of a delay. Um, we were on a waiting list, so it just kind of took a while in between. So it wasn't ideal, but we have them and we love them. Um, as far as the install of both of them, it was... Uh, little iffy the install of the solar panels wasn't favorable which we can go into in another video um, it would be kind of a long story so we love everything about having solar panels and having a solar backup um, battery backup but um, yeah install is another story um, so someone asked us kind of how and when does the system and having solar pay for itself so basically what we did at the point in life that we were at, we financed our setup. Um, basically, it's about $130 a month, and we pay that on a loan. It's a 10-year loan for the solar panel setup itself, as well as you know everything that goes into it. So that excludes the power walls. They were on their own separate deal. Um, when does it pay for itself? I mean, honestly, about nine months out of the year, it's beneficial and it pays for itself financially. Um, we pay truthfully about the same that we were paying monthly before, so, but we're getting something out of it, we're paying towards something. I would compare it to like renting a house versus owning a house, you know, we're paying towards something in the long run versus just paying a power company each month. So there's benefits in that as well. Uh, they do, the power walls have a 10 year warranty which is great and a fun fact is that they're about 300 pounds each so um, it was a little fun to watch the install of those happen. I think if I go back far enough I might have a video to insert of um, little bits and pieces of the install of the um, solar panels as well as the power walls. I may include those in a part two but if I can find them I might also include them here. So. Um, kind of further elaborate on the financial aspect of it. We pay the bare minimum to be hooked up to the grid to PGE, which is the local energy company here in Oregon where we live. Um, basically, it's $13. That's all we pay to PGE each month, and then we pay our loan separately. The power walls themselves, those were about $7,000 each. So, um, if you were curious on that, that's how much we paid at the time that we got those. Um, again, we were put on a waiting list, we got them in April, so the cost and install charges on those today may be different, but that's how much we paid at the time. So um, We do also get tax credits, which help financially you know, make it more worth it. 
Um, it technically lowers the price when you think about it because we do get kickers and you know our refunds a little bit higher each year, um, which is going away. So if you're interested in solar, get it now because it's going to be more beneficial now than in a couple years as far as those tax breaks. So here in Oregon, and this is something that I have to write out because um, I'm still learning and trying to fully understand this concept itself. So we have one-to-one um, -one net metering, which basically is when we make more energy than we use, we get credits for that. So it helps us in the winter months. So like, let's say super sunny days, we get a bunch of credits put to our account. We make more than we're using than in the winter months when it's cold and rainy, like today is a perfect example, it's stormy when we're filming this. Basically, we're not really producing a lot of solar, but we have those credits to cover it. So that is how it works in Oregon with the one-to-one -one net metering. As far as maintenance, it's something someone might be curious about. It doesn't really require a whole lot. As far as the panels, clean them off a couple times a year. When it snows, there's a little bit more maintenance. Um, where we live at in Oregon, we get minor snow each year since we've had them we've had one good snow where hunter had to go and i think he used a hose and just melted the snow off of them but you can push the snow off there's some um tools out there they're a little on the spendy side but um if you live somewhere snowy that's something more maintenance wise you may have to consider but it doesn't really affect us um, but just clean them a couple times a year uh pollen can kind of accumulate on them in the summer months so you can wash them down. I think Hunter, um, picture like a car wash brush, I'm pretty sure I saw him doing that last summer at one point, just kind of cleaning them off. So not a whole lot of upkeep there. With the power walls, they do also kind of run the same way that Tesla vehicles do. They do have over the air updates, so there's not a ton of maintenance with these as well. So. Once it's up and running, it's kind of up and running. Not a whole lot that you have to worry about. Um, basically, for those of you who don't care a ton about solar, but you're curious and you're here to watch, how it works, basically, when the sun rises, the solar production starts. You know, pretty simple. And how it works with us is anything that we're producing and using gets used. So solar starts, let's say we're running the dryer we have lights on that comes in and produces enough energy to run those things our current usage and then anything else outside of what we're using currently begins coming to our power walls and charging those up so then after that once the you know it's still daytime the sun's still shining we're not using as much in the house it's filling up the power walls once those get charged enough, at that point, then it starts going back to the grid. So then as the sun starts to come down and we're getting close to the evening time where the production is starting to go down to the point where, you know, it's nighttime, we're not producing any solar, we run exclusively off of the power walls. We are not running off of the grid at that point. Uh, and then the process would start again the next day. So we'd run off the power walls all night, the sun comes up, we begin producing, we use what we're producing at that moment first, so on and so forth. So um, that's kind of a brief overview of how that works for us with having battery backup. It's a little bit different if you don't have that, um, but that's just how it works for us. Um, another very cool thing about it, um, it may be different if you go through a company outside of Tesla. I know just how it works for us. There is an app, it's the same one that you know all Tesla products use. It makes it really concise. Um, <clears throat> so with that app, you can watch real time your production, your consumption, you know, what's going on. And you can see that, and I'll include a, a video recording here of what the app kind of looks like. Pretty user friendly. Um, took Hunter explaining it, you know, a couple times to me, and it makes sense. So that is very nice to be able to watch that. It also tells you when the grid goes down, which for us, having the battery backup, um, which is kind of the next thing that I'll get into is power outages. Um, when the grid goes down, it sends an alert, and we may not have even known the power went out. Now we do, which is kind of cool. So um, as far as when the power goes out, which doesn't happen a whole lot here, 
Um, while we've had this system, I think it's happened twice. Both times were due to extreme heat during the summertime. Um, so basically, if you only have solar panels on your roof, you kind of become SOL at that point because everything shuts down for the safety of pretty much everybody involved. Uh, but if you have a battery backup, you're able to be self-sufficient at that point. So anytime the power has gone down, we truthfully don't really know that it goes down unless our neighbors tell us or, you know, you see it on Facebook or something because as soon as the power goes down, these kick in and our power remains on. So we even ran the AC still during those times during the summer when it went down because we could, we had that backup. Um, so it really is beneficial, I would say, to go the Powerwall route with your solar system. And on that topic as well, so kind of how that also works a little bit further into it is let's say um, it would be different depending on if the power goes out in the daytime or the nighttime. In these two cases, it was the daytime, so you would still be producing if you have battery backups. So anything the solar is producing while the power is out is going directly into the power wall. So you really are self-sufficient in that aspect versus, you know, if it goes out at night, you're not producing, but you still have the backups. You're still self-powered, which is great. Now, um, pretty much that kind of covers the basics of having a solar system, having battery backups, how it works for us. We are a small family of two with two dogs. We don't use that much energy each day, so our system really is kind of perfect for us. Um, for our house size and everything, it's great. You can work with a company to find what size you need to best benefit your family and your household. We would highly recommend solar and highly, highly recommend a battery backup. You really get the most out of your solar system by having that option available to you. Now, I would say we love Tesla products from what we've owned. Uh, the customer service, however, on the energy side, we don't have a Tesla vehicle yet, so we can't really speak to that side, but on the energy side, customer service it has a little to be desired. And again, if you guys are curious what we mean by that, it is a long story that we could get into. <laughs> we've got the receipts. We've got, you know, all of the information on why that was a bad time. Um, let us know below in the comments if you want to see that and we'll go ahead and do that. So um, products are great, beautiful I would add as well. Everything is clean, looks good. Um, the experience was it was good now in the outcome of it, so I would highly recommend it. Um, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Again, if there's anything I missed that you want to know, drop it down below. And next week we are going to have an also exciting video, I guess maybe more exciting than this to some people. We will have our gender reveal next week and um, more baby content and more informational content on the way as well. So thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit different than some of the things that I post, but I like to keep my channel well-rounded. That way everybody has something to watch. So uh, I will see you guys next week. Thanks.